Let us say this chorus together before we go into prayers. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, how wonderful you are. You are brighter than the morning star. This is our confession, O oh God, that you are brighter than the morning stars. You are fairer, much more fairer than the lilies of the valley. You are more precious than gold. All we need is you, Lord Jesus. With you, we have all. With you, all is possible. With you, we are satisfied. Lord, we need you this morning. Speak to us your word that is life and spirit. Your word that can strengthen us, that can pierce our bones and our marrows. Father, we want to hear from you this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. I thank God for making it possible for me to be here this morning. I thank my Lord Bishop for the Daosisa Mission Week and for the rooster that has given us the privilege to exchange pulpit this morning. I want to thank your vicar and my brother, the venerable P.O. G. Whisker, for the good work he's doing in the cathedral. My brother, the Lord will continue to strengthen you. He will strengthen your wife and your entire family in the name of Jesus Christ. I always call him the governor and the spirit to govern, to rule, to dominate is in him. It will continue to increase in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to thank all the cathedral priests and their wives for the support and the teamwork we are doing here. May the Lord bless you all in the name of Jesus Christ. And to the good people of this wonderful cathedral, I say congratulations. Your testimonies are everywhere. The good job you are doing, and the good Lord will continue to bless every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Without wasting time, we want to look at the theme for the week, the Mission Week 2019, which says, Gather in the harvest. Can we say it together? Gather in the harvest. And the text is John, the gospel according to St. John, chapter 4, verse 35. It says, Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Some translation says, they are ripened already. To harvest. And some other translation says they are matured already to harvest. Very quickly, I will look at this theme under the following subheadings definitions and explanation of the theme, the scattered souls to be gathered, 
the danger of not gathering for the Lord, that is the danger of not harvesting for the Lord, and the blessing that we follow those who harvest. Blessing for souls harvesters. Blessing for those who gather for the Lord. To gather simply means to bring together. Harvest, it means the crops gathered in. It could also mean the time or season of the year when mature crops, ripened crops, are gathered in. I quickly want to add another word, harvesters. Harvesters are the farm workers who help to gather in the crops. A little exegesis and explanation of the theme. God is a farmer. The world is the farm. Human beings, souls of men, the creation of God are the crops. Believers, Christians, are the workers in the farm or the vineyard. The Christians are supposed to be the harvesters. Scattered souls to be gathered. To gather is the opposite of scatter. The devil scatters, but God always gathers in harmony. John chapter 10 verse 10 says, The thief cometh not but to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. The sole business of the devil is to destroy what God has planted. It will scatter what God has initiated. But Jesus said, I am come to gather. I have come to bring together. I have come to assemble the lost souls of God. God created man in his own image to live in holiness and righteousness. Man was made to live in harmony with God. Man was made to live in harmony with himself, spirit, soul, and body. Man was made to live in harmony with his neighbors. And when I say neighbors, that could be your husband, your children, your parents, and those that live with you, around you, in the same environment. Man was made to live in harmony with his environment. Talking about the planet Earth. This good plan and purpose was scattered by the devil. And the devil is still scattering this plan for man. And so what does he do? He tries to disconnect you from having a good relationship with your God. He tries to lure you into sin because he knows that once you sin, you are disconnected. And so we find all kinds of sin in the world today. He makes you an enemy to your God. He makes you an enemy to yourself. Because you do things that are harmful to yourself. He makes you an enemy to your neighbors. He makes you an enemy even to the environment where you live. And so where you see, find that you are not living a righteous life, you are not living a holy life. You are not having a good relationship with your God. Know that the devil is at work. When you are not having a good relationship with your neighbors, with your family, with your husband, wife, and children, know that the devil is at work. Because he has come to destroy. He has come to scatter what the Lord had put together. When you are not living in a good relationship with your neighbors, those around your household, your community, where you work, in the marketplace, where you sell, you know that the devil is at work. And what does the devil do? What is the manifestation of the work of the devil? You find adultery. 
married men and married women having relationships outside. Immorality everywhere. You find fornication. You find the practice of witchcraft everywhere. Whether in the village, whether in the city, whether you travel abroad, witchcraft everywhere. You find a high level of spiritual possession, negative spiritual possession. People living in the marine kingdom. And when you find yourself in this kind of situation, you know that the devil is at work. He has come to scatter the plan of God for your life. He has come to remove you from the home God has built from you. So you find that many people are not at home with God. To be at home with God is to have a good relationship with this living God. It's to live a life of holiness, a life of righteousness, harmony with your neighbors. And when this is absent, you know that the devil is at work. He has come to scatter the plans of God for your life. I stretch my hand towards you this morning. Whatever the devil has scattered in your life, as you listen to this word of life this morning, God will bring them back to you in the name of Jesus. God will assemble your life again in the name of Jesus Christ. While the devil is busy trying to scatter, God is in the business of bringing together again. He will build your life again. He will build your family again. He will build your business again. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are here to gather. The Lord wants men and women that we use as vessels of honor. Men and women as instruments in his hand to gather. When you go out to witness, you are gathering for the Lord. When you go out to preach to people, you are gathering for the Lord. Evangelism can be carried out in many ways. Not only by preaching. Even your lifestyle is a form of evangelism. Care and support for the weak, those who are oppressed, is a form of evangelism. When you try to proclaim Christ in the way that is best known to you, you are building, you are gathering for the Lord. The Lord will help you to gather in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not scatter. You will not be an agent in the hand of the devil. You will build for the Lord. You will harvest for the Lord. You will gather for the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Apart from sinners that we know around us, that we need to bring into the kingdom of God, there is another category that I want to open our eyes to. Many of us find it difficult to go up north to preach the gospel. But now, the northerners are moving down south to us. They are trooping down to the south. People we couldn't reach hitherto in the north. By divine orchestration, they are coming down to us now. About a year ago, I received a call from my village that some people just came in a lot, about 25 of them, men, women, and children. They just came and just entered the compound with their children and settled down in the veranda under the palm trees everywhere. And the pastor, the curate there, called and said, ah, we don't know these people. We don't know where they have come from. They have taken over the whole compound. I said, who are they? We now ran down to the village. They couldn't speak English, but one of them was able to communicate with us. And they said they are from Gombe State. Why are you here? Said they just came to settle down here to do fishing. To fish? And you couldn't come to make the survey before coming? You came with your wives and your children? Apparently, these are people who are running from the north for safety. Anytime we hear 
about the northerners, all we, what that comes to our mind, Boko Haram. What that comes to our mind, terrorism. But I tell you, there are many people who are running from the north down to the south for safety. Not everyone in the north is a member of the Boko Haram. Not everyone in the north are terrorists. In fact, not all that is in the north are houses. Some of them can, they speak Hausa, but they are not Hausa people. They have their own local languages they speak. And so they are running from the north for the safety of their lives. What do we do with these people? I say, ah, we say, you can't stay here. In fact, what came to us? I said, these people don't come again. They don't come with their trouble. Ah, uh ah. -uh. You can't stay now. The river, I said, the river is too deep. You can't fish. Okay, where, where will you go now? I said, there are people, some of them went to Onicha. So call them, make contact with them. Say, these people cannot stay here. They have to come. I say, they don't even have money to go back. All we did was to raise money for them. Call them, come, bring the lorry from Onicha. Come and take these people. We gave them the money and they went back. And now, within this week, when we're talking about mission, talking about the need to evangelize, it dawned on me that would have been a very good opportunity to host these people and show them the way of the Lord. There are many of them who are coming down here everywhere. In my station in Abraka there, my neighbors, good neighbors anyway, there is a mosque there, and the Muslims are there. Once in a while, the man there will come to me, trying to get close to me. I say, which guy, man, which guy, I will say people would be this one. Huh? Now, they are be they want to survey the church, survey everywhere to come and trouble us again. That is what comes to mind. But listening to Capro, when they ministered here, I said, this could be another mission field. Do you know what? If we fail to confront them with the gospel of Christ, they will take over the land. They are marrying our daughters. You see young robo girls in Abracade covering their faces. They are already married to them. Covering their faces. They are marrying our daughters and they are becoming Muslims. I went along that refinery road to buy ram somewhere and I saw a young lady. As we were talking, we were speaking robo. We didn't know that she was an robo. I went to my dad, he and I said, he spoke to Robo. Say, ah, they hear Robo. Say, be Robo, hello. What did they tell this one? They cover your face. He said, this man and my husband. Ah? Uh -huh. They are marrying our daughters. They are Islamizing our people. And we fold our hands, thinking they are all Boko Haram. They are all terrorists. They are taking over the land. Sooner or later, our grandchildren will be Muslims. Our great-grandchildren will be Muslims. All over the place. The northerners are pushing down. It's a great mission field. If we fail to confront them with the gospel, if we fail to preach to them, because there are barriers already, once we see them, we say, no, these people are not part of us. The Lord will open our eyes to this mission field in the name of Jesus. Where do we find these lawsuits? They are everywhere. Even in the church, the lawsuits are here. Sinners. The church is not just for saints alone. It's for both sinners and what? And the saints. Prostitutes come to church. Armed robbers come to church. Witches and wizards come to church. Possessed of the evil spirit come to church. Everyone comes to church. So when you hear people say they're still for church, they see my phone. They are Why are you surprised? The church is not just for the saints alone. It's for both sins and what? And sinners. But our prayer is that as the sinners come to church, they will repent of their sins. They will give their life to Jesus. That is our prayer for them. There are many people who live in the church, yet they are not Christians. There are many people born and bred in the church, yet they have not given their life to Jesus. It's a mission field. It's a mission field that we need to exploit. They are in your family. They are in your family, both immediate and extended family. As I speak, you know those who have not given their life to Jesus in your family. And you have not felt the need to preach to them any day. They are your uncles, your aunties, your sisters and brothers. They are there. You hold meetings together with them. You live well with them. Yet, the need to preach to them 
have not come to you. The passion to minister to them. They are there. They are in your family. They are in the marketplace where you sell, where you trade. You meet with them every day, but you don't feel the need to minister to them. You don't feel the need to preach the gospel to them. We need to gather them unto the Lord. They are in the hospitals where you work. As a doctor, as a nurse, you meet these people every day. Somebody said, wherever you are walking is your divine posting. Wherever you are located, where you are walking, God has posted you there as an ambassador. You think you just secured a job? You think by your influence you got a job somewhere? It is divine arrangement. God has posted you there for a purpose. We need to witness to them. They are in the schools where you teach. The children are there. Your colleagues are there. Many have not given their life to Jesus. You need to witness to them. It's a mission field. Wherever you live, wherever you walk, it's a field that you need to explore. I want to quickly talk about the dangers of not harvesting, the dangers of not witnessing, the dangers of not proclaiming the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. One, Ezekiel 3, 17 to 19. And Acts 20, 26 to 26 says, their blood will be required from you. It's dangerous. Those people you know who have not given their life to Jesus, you live with them, you see them every day, and you fail to minister to them. You fail to gather them for the law. They will die in their sins. And the Lord says, but their blood he will require that from you. What a danger. What a danger, child of God. You are saved to save others. You are saved to gather for the Lord. And if you fail to gather, if you fail to harvest for the Lord, if you fail to witness, you fail to declare the message of God to them, he said they will die in their sins. Those your family members, they will die in their sins. Those your colleagues who are sinners, they will die in their sins. But their blood, God says, He will require at your hand. Mark 8 38 says, If you are ashamed to preach the gospel, but that could be a reason. I'm very shy, you. I'm not going to feel preach you. You are ashamed to proclaim the gospel. Jesus said, On the last day, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of you. That means you cannot enter into heaven. He will be ashamed of you because you were ashamed of him. Mark, Luke 12, 8 to 9. Say, if you deny him in this present world, this corrupt world, in this generation, in your place of work, in the place where you stay, if you deny Jesus, you fail to proclaim him, he said he will also deny you on the day of judgment. The Lord will never deny you in the name of Jesus. We will do what he commands us to do. He will not be ashamed of us any day if we obey his command. Number four. Mark 12, 30. Luke eleven twenty three. He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me, scattereth abroad. It's an emphatic statement. If you are not with Jesus in this matter, and you are lukewarm, you sit on the fence, you are neither here nor there, and you do not gather with him, he said you are against him. Because God has deposited so much in you to evangelize the world. There is so much skill, so much talent in you, so much resources that will gather in the lost souls into the kingdom. And you fail to use them. Said you are against him and you are scattering. Blessings for souls, harvesters. Proverbs 11.30 Say, he that winning souls is what? Is why. And what happens to the wise virgins? They went in into the banquet with the bride, with the groom. 
If you are wise, you will do what God is telling you to go. And he will welcome you into the banquet. Daniel 12, verse 3. Let us read this one together. Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. Open your Bible. It says, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many into righteousness as the stars forever and ever. If you are wise, doing the biddings of the Lord, proclaiming the gospel, harvesting for the Lord, gathering for the Lord, he said you will be, you will shine like stars. You will shine like stars. The brightness of the heaven. And as many that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever. Let me tell you one thing. On the last day we shall have crowns. Those who win souls, you will have crowns. And your crowns will be decorated with stars. As you win more souls for the Lord, your crowns will be shining with stars. And we lay down this trophy before the Lord. We lay them before the Lord. Are you going to have trophies before the Lord? Is your crown going to shine like stars? Are you going to go home to, with the Lord empty-handed? Are you going to go home empty-handed? There's a song I like it in Robo, it's in English. Kemewa body o dipo. Rabu Jesu Sibi me. Ka keme mu mi wo yere. Kemewa body o dipo. Must I empty handed go? Must I go and empty handed? Must I go and empty handed? As a priest, without, without. A soul to present to the Lord. Must you go as a child of God without a soul that you have won for the Lord? We're told a story of an American evangelist who went to India to preach, to witness. And in the process, because the place was hostile, he was killed. And later they discovered in America that the place would be hostile, but women could penetrate. The wife volunteered, volunteered to go there again. And she went to the same area, stayed there and preached. At the end, the same man who killed the husband gave his life to Jesus. And in the process, he revealed that he was one that killed one white man that came home. He knew that that was her husband. She made everything possible to come to America with this man. And when they were gathered in a fellowship, in the hall of worship, he said, I have a testimony. I have a trophy. The one that killed my husband, the murderer, is now a brother. The murderer is now what? A brother. Do you have evidence? You have trophies to present to the Lord. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. St. Andrew's Cathedral, you have been very wonderful. Supporting the work of God and the mission work. I'm aware that last Sunday you had your media harvest. But we can never give up doing this work. We will continue to witness. We will continue to gather in for the Lord. We will continue to harvest souls for the Lord. Lift up your hands to the Lord. You have given for mission work to save souls from darkness into the light of God. From the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. You will not miss the kingdom of God. You will not labor in vain. Amen. The Lord will bless you and reward you with eternal life. Amen. You will end up in the bosom of the Lord. Amen. I bless you today. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, 
and God the Holy Spirit.